Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland, and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Last week, a long-running legal saga came to its conclusion. I'm talking about the, the gay cake case. Now, Asher's Bakery is a baker, a Christian bakery in Northern Ireland. It's named after the tribe of Asher, who baked cakes for the king in the Bible. And uh, in 2014, now Asher's is famous for their cakes, famous for doing uh, personalized cakes. You can get cakes with all kinds of messages and designs on them, very artistic. And in 2014, a chap called Gareth Lee, a gay rights activist, went into Asher's and ordered a cake with uh, two characters from Sesame Street on it and the message support gay marriage. Uh, legalized gay marriage. Now, uh, the, uh, the young person on duty initially took the order, but later when the owners realized what the order was for and they said, well, this isn't something we believe in, that's not a message we want to proclaim. So they contacted Mr. Lee and said, sorry, we, we can't make your cake for you. We're going to have to refund you your, your deposit. Uh, Gareth Lee took Asher's Bakery to court and a county court in Northern Ireland found, that, found them guilty of discriminating against him on the grounds of his sexuality and fined them £500. And that was the Ashers appealed that to the court, Northern Irish Court of Appeal and they lost their case there. So they took their case to the UK Supreme Court. And in 2019, the UK Supreme Court unanimously overturned Asher's conviction. Why? Because they said, and this is what Asher's had said all along, they weren't discriminating, discriminating against the customer on the grounds of his sexual orientation. They were, they were saying they didn't want to print the message. It wouldn't matter who, if you were uh, either gay or straight and you went in and ordered a cake with that message, they weren't going to print it for you. Um, and the, and the court, UK Supreme Court agreed with that and they unanimously said it would actually be a denial of human rights to force somebody to proclaim a message that they didn't themselves agree with. And actually prominent gay rights activists such as Peter Tatchell supported Asher's right to refuse the order. However, Gareth Lee refused to accept that and he appealed to the European Court of Human Rights and last week the, Hume, the ECHR refused to hear the case and there's no more grounds for appeal. So basically the case is done. Ashers are left alone. Meanwhile, the Northern Ireland Equality Commission has spent a quarter of a million pounds or 20% of its entire budget for the last, uh, the last seven years in uh, pursuing this case. Now, the fact is discrimination is wrong and we should not be allowed to discriminate against somebody because we don't like their beliefs or their religion or, or their sexuality. Uh, you know, evangelicals in Ireland have been the victim of discrimination in the past. I remember years ago, a church in a rural part of Ireland where I visited and I met a lady there who had given her life to Jesus and now she had to drive 20 miles to buy a pint of milk. None of the stores close by would sell her a pint of milk because they were so mad at her for joining a group of born again Christians and abandoning her traditional faith in the established church. I can remember in Drogheda, uh, we, the church that I pastor, Solid Rock Church, I can remember we wanted to rent a hotel to hold our meetings in and we were refused. We were told that they wouldn't rent it to a religious group such as ours, but they would. We knew they did rent it out for Catholic church events. And so uh, what I did, I got another one of our church leaders who was a serving member of the Gardaí to put it. I got him to come in with me the next week. And I said, would you put your uniform on? I want your cap, everything. And we went in together. And uh, this time the hotel took our booking because they knew fine rightly that the, what, the, what they were doing was illegal. It was discrimination. And I'm glad that we had laws to protect us in that way. However, that's all about discrimination, not proclaiming a message. We weren't asking the hotel to start saying that people needed to be born again. We just wanted to rent a room off them like anybody else. Ashers did not discriminate against a customer. They refused to proclaim a message that they strongly disagreed with. And you know, it's right that that principle should hold true. 
You think about it. If, if you have a Jewish man running a t-shirt shop, well, it's somebody who he knows to be a neo-Nazi comes in and wants to order 100 black t-shirts. Can't discriminate against the guy. He should sell him the t-shirts. But if that same guy wants to, him to print up t-shirts that will have a swastika on them, then the, t the Jewish t-shirt proprietor should have the right to say no. It's against his human rights to force him, to, as a Jew, to print swastika t-shirts. In the same way, if a bakery is being run by a gay baker, you know, if a heterosexual customer wants to come in and order a lot of cakes, fine, he, he should never, he can't discriminate against him because the customer is, has a different sexuality to his own. But if that customer is demanding that he make a cake and decorate it with a verse from Romans that condemns homosexuality, that gay baker should not be forced to fulfill that order. A Catholic printer in Belfast, and should they be forced to print leaflets advertising the Orange Order? Of course not. It's basic human rights that we should not be forced. We, we should have the right to own our, hold our own opinions, but we shouldn't be forced to proclaim somebody else's opinions that we disagree with. So if the issue in this case wasn't discrimination, what was it? Well, it's actually it's about acting like a jerk. Because I refuse to believe that Mr. Lee just happened to pick a baker's that was specifically Christian, that was named after a passage of the Bible that was very well known for their Christian beliefs. He was obviously seeking confrontation in going in. He was looking for a controversy and he got what he was looking for. You see, you have a human right to hold different opinions, but you don't have a human right to be a jerk about it. And the same applies to us as Christians. Sometimes the way I hear Christians speaking against gay people, the Christians act and behave like jerks, and that's wrong as well. I remember some years ago, there was a Christian business was in a controversy over this very same kind of issue, but they had behaved in a way that, to be honest, was extremely offensive to a gay customer. I was asked by the BBC to appear on one of their programs. They said, do you want to come on and support religious freedom? I said, no. And they said, why not? I said, because this isn't about religious freedom. It's about people acting like jerks. And I don't think Christians or anybody else in that matter should act like jerks jerks. Now, in, in the end, this case, you may say, well, it was all sorted out correctly in the end. But as a result of this whole controversy, Ashers won't do most of their personalized cakes anymore. They've had to withdraw that service. They will, they'll still do birthday cakes or, you know, for the birth of a baby with a baby's name on. But if I wanted to go into Ashers and order a cake, for example, uh, I don't know, to celebrate my wife, uh, passing a, an academic degree or something of that nature. I, I couldn't do that. Ashers have had to stop that practice and stop providing that service to customers because somebody chose to act like a jerk. And the fact is this, whether it's the Christians or who are acting like jerks or it's people are acting like jerks to try to antagonize Christians, when people start acting like jerks, we all lose out. We can all hold our opinions and we can hold them firmly, and I believe that we as the church should hold firmly to biblical truths and biblical convictions. But we don't have to be a jerk about it, and other people shouldn't be a jerk about it in their reactions and relationships with us. I do believe that while this is a contentious subject, we can move forward, and the church can continue to stand as people who are not hateful, who are compassionate, who want to present the gospel to all, but still can hold on to our principles and should not be forced to make proclamations or declarations that we do not actually believe to be true. Some, some people think the situation is now so conflicted that we can't do that. I believe we can. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming and there's better days ahead. God bless you in Jesus' name and join us again next week for our weekly message from Evangelical Alliance Ireland.